Early July 2019 was a peaceful period in the Gulf of Mexico, with daily thunderstorms scattered across the southeast. Social media shared early projections of something developing in the Gulf, but in a way that most people were not familiar with. An area of thunderstorms over the Mississippi River Valley was projected to move to the Gulf Coast and actually lead to the formation of a tropical depression. It was known as a mesoscale convective vortex to meteorologists, which basically means a medium-sized group of thunderstorms within a region of low pressure. It can move hundreds of miles over a few days. These are not unusual, but this time models gave a long lead projection of the possibility that the region of low pressure could move over water and transition to a tropical disturbance. Satellite didn't show much of what was happening, at least to the untrained eye, but by the time that mesoscale convective vortex reached the Gulf of Mexico, it flared up in a broad region of low pressure. Now, decades ago, before sophisticated computer models, before social media, that would have been about the first time that most people would have noticed. As this disturbance was close to land, with the likelihood of it becoming a named storm before a relatively quick landfall, it needed a designation so that watches and warnings could be issued by the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center. By recent protocol, the tropical disturbance was designated as Potential Tropical Cyclone No. 2 on Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. While tropical cyclone is a newer term to the United States public, it is an old term for meteorologists worldwide to describe low pressure storm systems with circulation, but without fronts over the tropics. That could be a tropical storm or a hurricane in the different names that they are known by around the world. So why not just call it a potential tropical depression or a potential tropical storm? The reason why is you don't know which one it could start as. Also, tropical cyclone covers the fact that it could become a hurricane. NOAA sent Hurricane Hunter aircraft into the potential tropical cyclone on July 10th, while the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron Hurricane Hunters also flew missions to gather data on wind, pressure, and structure. Tropical Storm Barry was born on Thursday, July 11th. It was weak. The more difficult part of forecasting what would become Hurricane Barry was determining rainfall on land. Barry was a lopsided storm, with the majority of the rain staying offshore. This was initially positive for coastal communities as it minimized the amount of wind that moved ashore in feeder bands. On Saturday, July 13th, Barry made landfall as a minimal hurricane. Southeastern Louisiana got the higher water levels from storm surge. Yeah, it's getting pretty high. The wind that pushes water ashore. It was as deep as five to seven feet above the ground. It was obvious in Plaquemines Parish. Water rescues were performed in Morgan City, Louisiana, close to where the center of the storm had made landfall. Golden Meadow Police Department saw firsthand the impact of storm surge on low-lying Louisiana Highway 1 along the coast. While Barry made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, those highest winds were confined to the center of the storm. Some of the highest wind gust values on the Louisiana coast, well over 60 miles an hour. On the Mississippi coast, it was nearly 50 miles an hour. The truth is, with a typical hurricane, the weather stations are so far apart that you never truly measure the highest wind. When you look at the daily rain, the day before landfall, it was only a few inches in most spots. The day of landfall, you see heavier amounts, even hundreds of miles away from the center. The day after landfall had much more rain, outlining the center of circulation in Louisiana. And then we see it move northward into Tennessee. Focusing on the higher rainfall amounts across the Florida Panhandle, southwestern Alabama, 4 to 8 inches, coastal Mississippi, central Mississippi, 8 to 12 inches, and then Louisiana, 10 to 20 inches of rain, even into Arkansas, 8 to 16 inches of rainfall. Barry may be remembered for becoming a minimal Gulf hurricane with obvious origins partly over land, a storm with a long outlook for formation and for being a lopsided system that delayed the arrival of rain and wind. 
Early in its lopsided life, you could notice the brightest clouds offshore. But if you looked at a version of the satellite that showed the thicker and taller clouds in color, it was more obvious. The clear lesson? All hurricanes are unique. I'm meteorologist Alan Seals.